Okay, so the big question is, what do you want mm -hmm. for it? Sounds like 18,000 to me. No, I don't. On the History Channel's hit series Pawn Stars, the folks at the world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop in Las Vegas rake in the big bucks with savvy purchases. Each episode depicts the shop's staff meeting regular people with exciting items to sell, and outside experts who have praised these artifacts. Sometimes, the stuff people bring in isn't worth very much, but the Pawn Stars have struck real gold on several occasions. The idea of discovering what an item's value is, or if it's even real, has given viewers a chance to tune in week after week, hoping to see something unique that was sitting in someone's attic for all these years. Pawn Stars gives their fans exactly what they want each episode by featuring items that may or may not be worth a ton. The show is full of other hilarious moments between the Harrison boys, but what makes the show great is when someone walks in with an item that turns out to be worth $100,000 or maybe even more. Over the years, the show has seen some incredible and rare things come through their doors. So today, we're listing 10 Pawn Stars scores too good for fans to believe. In the season 13 episode, Killer Pawn, a customer brought in a couple of $500 bills from a bygone era, and he initially asked for a top dollar price from Rick, who was obviously interested in the items. However, he wanted to make sure he didn't overpay for something he could have made a profit on. The first item, a 1918 $500 Federal Reserve note, while the second was an 1882 $500 gold note. These things are great. These were precursors to the Federal Reserve, more or less, to our modern money. These were not backed by anything, they just printed them. But what gave them value is, is you could pay taxes with them. He was looking to score $33,000 for the gold note and $17,000 for the Federal Reserve note, so 50 k for the pair. The expert, Peter Treglia, said his favorite is the 1918 Federal Reserve note featuring a portrait of Chief Justice John Marshall. It was also in better condition than the 1882 gold note, which the currency expert noted showed evidence of being restored. Rick then asked the customer for a more reasonable asking price than his original 50 k and after some haggling, the customer accepted Rick's offer of $35,000. One of the most surprising moments in the show's history featured a seller who came into the shop looking to unload a piece of jewelry they got from a relative without knowing precisely what they owned. The seller showed the Pawn Stars the spider brooch, which Rick quickly examined. Soon, he was looking very nervous and excited to the point of nearly crawling out from behind the counter to scream. He knew he was holding something extremely valuable, but the owner did not have a clue about it. The shock came when the owner said she only wanted a couple of thousand dollars, but Rick decided to offer her 15,000. He could have taken the deal and ran off with a crazy steal, but he just had to be honest to her somewhat. As it turns out, it is worth $80,000, making his $15,000 purchase a great deal. When it comes to items related to the United States presidents, there's a significant market for collectors, but their value is much higher when it comes to things that belong to well-loved presidents. In the season 7 episode called Close But No Cigar, a piece of presidential history walked into the shop and immediately blew Rick away. That came as no surprise since the piece had belonged to one of America's most respected and loved former presidents, John F. Kennedy. It was an old cigar box that had sat directly on his deck. Moreover, the box was still stocked with some cigars that JFK had secured for himself just hours before signing the Cuban trade embargo. It was clear that Rick would wheel and deal until he got the desired price. The seller was seeking $95,000, but Rick managed to lower the price down to $60,000. This was an excellent deal since some of JFK's cigar boxes had been sold for over half a million back in the 90s. A guy named Adam brought in a fifth edition of the Book of Mormon, the last one to be printed in 1842 during Joseph Smith's time. Rick was pretty interested, but he had to call in an expert to check it out. According to a rare book expert, Rebecca Romney, who Rick trusted the most when it came to identifying all kinds of books accurately, the book's value was directly related to the history of the Mormon Church's troubled beginnings. She stated that the book was by far the most valuable one Rick had ever had her appraise. She valued the book at about $40,000, and Rick bought the book for $24,000. When people decide to walk into a garage sale, there can be a glimmer of hope that they will miraculously come across some rare and valuable object. An extremely fortunate Pawn Stars customer felt this thrill after purchasing a pretty chunk of metal for a whopping 75 cents at a random yard sale. Despite not knowing much about it, Rick Harrison recognized there might be some value to this pretty piece of silver. This order was founded in 1325, and the White Eagle is basically the symbol of Poet. It's on their national emblem. But they changed it. They took the original style of the award, they put it on top of the Russian Imperial Eagle, which is the eagle with two heads. Dropping $6,000 on the piece before even bringing in one of his experts to appraise it and 
and tell them precisely what it was. Expert Craig Gottlieb later told Rick that it was an Order of the White Eagle medallion that dated back to the era of Tsar's occupation of Poland and was worth much more than he had paid. For the right buyer, its value can be up to $30,000. It was a win-win situation for both the shopper and the customer. Another rare pawning business incident. Long before the History Channel turned this simple little Las Vegas pawn shop into a multi-million dollar corporation, Rick Harrison was working himself to the bone, doing everything he could to make a profit. One of the biggest profits he has ever turned came 20 years ago when a woman walked into the shop with four sets of photo gravures by famous American photographer Edward Curtis. Without having any knowledge or experience with these types of items, Rick had no idea what it was worth. Since the owner just wanted $50 for the set, he decided to take a chance and purchase them. After doing some research of his own, he found the photo gravures were worth a bundle and ended up selling them for $20,000. When a seller with a 450-year-old book on alchemy walked into Gold and Silver Pond, he knew he had something special. Isaac Newton is one of history's most influential figures, not to mention one of science's most integral godfathers. Famous for many things, but chiefly his discovery of gravity, anything directly touched by this famous person is practically priceless, and rightfully so. This book is over 450 years old. It's a crackpot book about alchemy, but it's still from Newton's library, and its owner Bob thought it would be worth quite a bit. After a call to his rare book expert, Old Man finds out the book is worth $20,000. That's when Bob amazingly accepts the low offer of $7,000 after Old Man says, you know, if I give you seven for it, I won't have money for dinner tonight. As it turns out, the rest of Newton's collection was either destroyed or archived, making this piece a rare addition to anyone's collection. Knowing that swords and weapons are a significant fixture in the pawn shop, especially if they turn out to be rare and ancient, a seller had hoped to trade a beautiful samurai sword to the shop for impressive profits. So, Corey slashed through negotiation on a 15th century samurai sword that could potentially net the shop over $10,000. Lawyer David came into the shop looking to sell a sword that he'd got as collateral from a client that didn't come back to claim it. So. David decided to sell the sword with no idea whatsoever of how much it's worth. But Corey made him a shallow opening offer at $800, although he said that he had seen a few of those swords going for thousands of dollars during the backroom confessional before the negotiation with the seller took place. After some negotiating, they struck a deal at $1,500, which was a steal, but the unprepared lawyer was delighted. Well, not so sure if he was still feeling that way when he later watched the show and found out the sword's value was five to $6,000 in its current condition, but it could be sold for a whopping $15,000 if Corey would pay a $3,000 restoration. Most people inherit the land, businesses, or family heritage like old paintings or a collection of baseball cards. But rarely do people inherit a rare, unique Spanish Empire gold peso which was actually minted in Peru. In 1715, a Spanish fleet carrying millions of pesos worth of gold and silver left Cuba on a trip to Spain, but was hit by a hurricane and sank to the bottom of the ocean off the coast of Florida. That's a Lima Ed Escudo, and in this corner there's an L, that means Lima, Peru, Mint. Eight is the denomination, biggest gold coin the Spanish made. Did you throw that on the scale? Yeah, I did. It's 27.0 grams. That is right on. Luckily, Jody was one of the few who inherited one exceptional gold coin from this shipwreck. When she appeared at the shop, she was looking to earn $2,000 for it. At first, Rick Harrison thought the coin was in too good condition to be genuine, but the expert confirmed it was an eight escudos coin minted in Lima, Peru, and was worth a cool $18,000. Given that Jody originally wanted $2,000 for the coin, she was pretty pleased to walk away with the $11,000 that Rick ended up offering. Brock Williams is a former New England Patriots defensive back, so when he appeared at the world-famous Gold and Silver Pawn Shop, Rick knew he was carrying something great and valuable. Though Rick's favorite thing to buy is undoubtedly cars and guitars, sports memorabilia are just everyone's cup of tea. And when it comes to football, there's no greater piece of history than a Super Bowl's winner's ring, an honor even some of the best players in history never got to hold. Sadly, some players that somehow won them without ever playing a single second for the victorious team don't really value them. The rookie had been plagued with injuries that forced early retirement, so he decided to pawn his 2001 Patriots Super Bowl ring for a modest $2,600. For whatever reason, he never came back for it, making it Rick's possession after the requisite 120 days. Because it's now his to sell, the price tag has rocketed up to $100,000. Be sure to comment down below and let us know if we've missed something. Hit that subscribe button and turn on the bell to never miss an upload. Thank you very much for watching.